Hello, my name is Robin Mullen, and I'm the president of the Inside Ed Foundation for Education. And it's a pure delight to announce that we are sponsoring a beautiful new series by Diana Wentworth, who will be sharing her amazing tips and practices and inspirations around creating more magic in your life. The very first part of this Expect Magic series is titled The Opening, Asking Quintessential Questions. Enjoy. So I'd like to introduce you to Diana Wentworth. She is an amazing, beautiful woman with a big, big heart who's continually, even after the age of 80 now, creating new and wonderful uh, things in her life and for all of us. And with, with great joy and excitement, I'm, I'm able to introduce you to her now. Thank you. I'll just give you a couple of sentences of overview of what's going to be happening here. There will be one 15 minute time when I'll be speaking directly to you about what magic is, what, what expect magic is. And we're going to use that little piece later somewhere. We don't know where yet. And there'll be another piece that'll run about 10 minutes, which will be your magic wand, which is going to be your ability to ask questions and really listen and sense um, the divine in your life, feeding you exactly what's next. So that's exactly what's going to happen. And so now I'm going to, um, I'm going to have to move out of my critical brain, my, uh, you know, everything, my ego and all of that, and move into a place where I found myself this morning in my meditation, where I meditate and I listen to something that just takes me into this deepest, deepest, deepest vulnerability. And I want to be able to speak to you from that place. Uh, there's a lot of words that I can say about this that are heady words that explains things unnecessarily. But what I want to share with you is the deepest um, vulnerability I feel right now and what the meaning of all this is and, and really what I want to come from it. So I'll begin now. Here I am you know, at the age of 81. And this is really a harvest season in my life. And that word season, I think, uh, will be meaningful, especially at the end of what I have to say. So there's a wonderful quote that floats around the internet. I don't know who wrote it, but it's something about how life shouldn't be a journey to the grave in a preserved body. It should really be a crazy, wonderful experience. I have had the most fabulous, extraordinary, magical, fulfilling, uh, satisfying, soul-nourishing life. I've had two amazing husbands who were devoted and capable of deep authenticity and real partners. And I've had invented ways of meeting all kinds of amazing people some of whom, all of whom are here today, really lots and lots of people. So this is what I really want to say from my deepest knowing. So Gary, Gary Zukov, um, author of Seed of the Soul, was our last speaker at The Inside Edge. And he was talking about his new book, The Universal Human. And in it, he said that our, our important challenge is to be able to align our personality and our soul. And this really struck me when he said that, because I think that's what I have been doing from my youngest years, really, is doing a deep inner listening, asking questions, listening, and finding my next stepping stones through a connection to what I call the divine. I don't mean to uh, offend anybody with my languaging. I know that we all have our, our paths we've traveled, but if we can just think about what's available to us as the divine mystery, 
and how we can access it and how we can listen and align, that really is what I really want to do. So instead of saying aligning the personality and the soul, I'm really thinking more with the words moving from ego to essence. And in doing that, we really notice the difference of what it feels like in our body. And we know when we're sitting with somebody that we can be totally open and honest and revealing with, and that we're being received, that we, that we can just relax into that, into that essence. And that that is where all the juice is really for us. So I had a mentor, an early mentor, who asked me my favorite question ever. She said, Diana, are you driven or drawn? And it was shocking to me because, of course, I saw the places I was driven. And I saw that my ego was running so much of what I was doing. And I wanted to be more drawn. I had learned to, to listen. But the answer actually arrived to me this very morning in meditation. I'm both driven and drawn. <laughs> I think that there is a time to tune in, to see what is revealed to us as our next steps, as our highest purpose. As, because I believe that what is good for us is good for the world. And that there's alignment in that, that can come just join and be our most powerful place of being. So in learning where I'm drawn, I then act and there's nothing that will stop me. I am like a steamroller. If I say I'm going to do something, I do it. And I've had a super productive life. And a lot of it has, I probably run over a bunch of people in my determination to, to to uh, be driven and to act and to bring my own creativity into being. So let's just talk about what is this energy? What is it that we tune into? I call it the divine mystery. I don't label it anything except really just the essence of goodness. And I'm always, always wanting to be in the highest light in that place. So I believe that that's our protection, that we are not asking to manipulate or uh, do things that are harmful, that we are asking from the purest place that we can ask about what is my highest uh, beingness in this world? Uh, what steps are in front of me? Um, can you reveal those steps to me so clearly that, that it becomes easy and almost effortless? And then I listen. I mean, I think that is the biggest thing is to, to notice, to notice the clues that come. I think the divine offers us clues all the time. And we just may not recognize them in the beginning. So what I want to do is tell you about a legend that is a Chinese legend that I believe is true. This legend says that when we're born, there's an invisible red thread that connects us to everyone we're destined to meet. And that this thread may tangle and go haywire, it looks like, but it will never, ever break. And the, this becomes an intersection of people or situations that move us into a place where we can inquire and listen and find out what is the very, very best possible action to take. So it led me from watching my grandmother, who was an amazing cook and ran a boarding house and gathered people around the table, into a career where I did, I didn't run a boarding house, but I had students in my kitchen learning to cook. And I loved gathering people around the table. There was an energy. I had this core wound of being so lonely and in a boarding school by myself. 
at the age of eight with no friends at all, uh, into wanting that feeling of home and a family gathered around me. Because I love to watch what would happen when people would spark each other or they'd connect or they'd, they'd love a certain dish that I prepared or they would bake a birthday cake and celebrate with each other. And that there would be this feeling of home and feeling of connection. And that, fortunately, I had met my incredible husband, Paul von Wellenitz. So just hold this up for a second. I assume you can see this for a second. He just had his 95th birthday on Monday if he were here. But he was here uh, very much to remind me of, of, my, of where this all began. So we had a wonderful career in cooking and entertaining and six cookbooks, cookbook of the year, TV show, all of that. Um, but it was never about the food. And, you know, I just didn't realize that. I realized that what I loved was gathering people together. And that led into opening the first chapter of the Inside Edge and inviting people that were red thread people who had already shown up in our lives uh, to be part of that. And it grew into this amazing a gathering breakfast meeting of over 37 years with 1,500 speakers. And it, it became a crossroads, this place. It was a playground and a crossroads of all the most interesting and fascinating people of our time. You know, just every speaker, David White, Ram Dass, you know, I mean, Barbara DeAngelis started her writing there, you know, I mean, it was Susan Jeffers, um, you know, these people just showed up, Louise Hay, all these people. And so having access to all of these really incredible, stimulating people was my dream come true, because I had a community of, of like minds and people who were inspiring. So I began to really trust the fact that the right people, the right situations would show up in my life. And it happened over and over. I know hotel lobbies seem to have been a good place for me. That's where I met Elvis and befriended him. Uh, that's where I, in Hong Kong, I met Paul von Wellenetz, who walked off the elevator, ended up standing right next to me, asked me where I was from. And we were engaged three days later. And he was just the most magical soulmate of my life um, because we were just um, maybe twin souls, I don't know. But anyway, enough of my stories. Um, my stories are well known, they're well documented. I've been on a million interviews. I wanna focus on you. I really wanna focus on you. I wanna gather you all onto my lap as a grandmother would and impart all of my experiential proof that there is divine guidance available to us in every moment. We can listen and in our listening, we can begin, we can just feel what feels true and right and pure. I think purity is with the intention of moving into this divine guidance that's available to us, allows us uh, to align our personality and our soul, to move from our ego to our essence so that we become the actual hands and feet of the divine and bring our unique soul expression into being. It's our creativity that is the magic in this world. And every one of us has so much more than we may even realize. So the purpose of this class really is to raise our ability to access all that is available to us. So I'm going to close with a poem that's meaningful to me. I had a heart attack in 2009, it was sudden. We caught it in time. I was only in the hospital 36 hours and got four long stents, but it was a wake up call for me. And I needed to do a lot of walking in order to heal and be as strong as I could be. So I decided to multitask and take a poem with me on every one of my walks. And each week I would have a new poem and the rhythm of walking and reciting the poem over and over actually helped me to memorize it, to learn it by heart. So here's one that feels absolutely appropriate to, to our morning. This is titled Without Brushing My Hair. And it's by Hafez, who was like a 13th century um, mystical poet. And I just love his humor and his imagery. 
So he says, the closer I get to you, beloved, the more I can see it is just you and I all alone in this world. I hear a knock at the door. Who else could it be? So I rush without brushing my hair. For too many nights, I have begged for your return. And what is the use of vanity at this late hour, at this divine season that has come to my folded knees? If your love letters are true, dear God, I will surrender myself to who you keep saying I am. Um, let's move, if it's okay with you, uh, let's move into our next, um, uh, it's about a 10 minute piece uh, where I will speak about the, the first activity that's going to be so key to accessing the magic. And that really is asking. Asking, when we ask, and we move into a state of receptivity and expecting solutions to come, that there's almost, it's almost like a state of wonder. I think that wonder is, is like a magic wand. And it opens that, that really clear connection with the divine. So I'm going to talk first about just beginning asking first thing when you wake up in the morning. I call this morning magic because I think it's part of our DNA to live in survival. So when we wake up in the morning, our first thought is usually something to the effect of, oh dear, what do I have to do today? Or what responsibilities are weighing on me? You know, I mean, we move into that. We're scanning for trouble. And so I think it's really important to ask the highest question that you can ask right then because there's been some scientific experiments done that if we catch that thought that could spiral us down within 17 seconds that we can we can lift it that we can move into you know this whole law of attraction of focusing on what we really want what what our soul wants so that we are thinking in a much higher place so you might ask, as I do usually, where is the most joy to be found today? Or how can I most effectively um, enhance this world, light this world? I think we're all here to light this world. With our individual unique expression, our creativity is what lights the world for sure. So I'm going to invite you to always be asking what I call a quintessential question, which is that that question almost contains a piece of the answer in the question. Uh, and I'll give some examples of that as we as we keep moment uh, talking here. Um, there's a book by the medical medium who's really an interesting, uh, he offers all sorts of health advice. And in the appendix, he has instructions on how to ask in a very interesting way. He says that angels um, do not act on their own free will, so that we need to ask. And not only that, but we need to ask out loud. And since I was widowed uh, about a year and a half ago, I can ask really loud. You know, I, I can get quite fierce with my requests. So what we want to do is always ask a beautiful question, um, requesting to be in a higher focus. So it might be, for instance, if there are money concerns, it might be something to the effect of, how may I earn a certain amount of money uh, this month easily, almost effortlessly, and do, by doing my highest purpose in the world? So you see already there's the solution. We're going to do our highest purpose. We're going to do this with ease. Um, it's cool. We expect it to happen, to come to us, the wisdom that we need to, in order to move in that direction. So it, it, there's a fine tuning that you're, you're actually listening. I'm a very auditory person, so I sense words. I don't actually hear words. 
uh, some people might access this wisdom in another way. You might see something visually that sparks something inside of you that is your answer. Or you, you're kinesthetic and you feel you feel the answer. The first words I ever discerned, and I must have been about nine or 10 years old, and it was very strange because I heard, I, I actually sensed that these words were true. It said, nothing really bad will ever happen to you. And it was so clear that I looked around to see if somebody had actually spoken. And I thought, hmm, how strange is that? Nothing really bad will ever happen to me. And I thought, well, that's good news. You know, maybe I'm just going to be this really lucky person. I'm going to have a charmed life and all of that. Yippee. <laughs> and that's good news. But but now I'm realizing that on a deeper level, um, at this wisdom that age has provided for me, I'm realizing that my core wound, which came from that profound loneliness, uh, could have la been labeled bad. And for the verbal abuse and the demeaning that I received as a girl, uh, that could have been labeled bad. But it's really an opportunity. Everything that happens to us is an opportunity to step into, you know, we can, we can see it as a curse or we can see it as a gift. And I really look back on my whole life now and see every single thing that happened as a gift. Even my father, for whom I had enormous anger all my life, and with whom I dialogued in journals and tried to understand and everything, I'd only realized two days ago that he was my absolute greatest teacher. So nothing really bad has ever happened to me, no matter what. And because of that loneliness, I was able to gather people together with my cookbooks and around tables in other places at the inside edge. And right now, when we are in this wisdom circle together, where we explore what magic is. So we want to craft really quintessential questions. The questions are fantastic. Uh, because from these questions, we radiate a, a frequency of curiosity and deserving and trust just by asking them. So what begins to happen uh, by asking a question such as, what is the highest path I can walk? What is my unique contribution to this world? What begins to happen is that a series of stepping stones begin to appear in front of us one at a time. I have a story about that. You've probably heard it and I won't say it here. But let's talk about the intensity. In my book, Send Me Someone, there were twice when I was feeling desperate, desperate for a solution. And I went into the bedroom by myself and I was fierce. I said, I need this now. We need to know what to do, what our next step is now. And I think there's something that we need to pay attention to in that fierceness and in that expectation. Because both times, uh, our cooking show showed up with two different networks offering us that within hours. And the other time, what are we going to do without our cooking career? The whole concept for the Inside Edge flowed in in a meeting that evening. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. You are amazing women. I feel the deep interest and support and exuberance and excitement that of things that are going to happen right here. Go off and make it a, an incredible day and a beautiful week.